Hello, hello, hello. How we doing, JC? Hey, buddy. How we doing, man? Oh, Jay. Hey, hey, I'm doing great. Look, we got Dale back. What's up, Dale? Good. Audio's good. Appreciate that. What's up, Jay? I'm gonna I'm getting my audio and everything all set up. Do it, man. Get your audio set up. What up, Matthew? Matthew B was the first one here. How we doing, everybody? It is a good day. Things are going well out here in California. I'm uh, I'm getting excited. I'm taking the kids to Montana. Uh, your audio is a little off. Sorry, JC. You're going to Montana? That's sweet. I've got a really good friend of mine uh, who I'm going to go visit. I went to his wedding last year, uh, and I promised my kids I'd bring him back the following year. So we are doing that. We're keeping our promise, and we're taking the kids to Yellowstone. He used to be a, a whitewater rafting river guide uh, on the Yellowstone River. So we're actually, he's got a raft ready for us. It's not going to be any rapids or anything, but we're going to go and take it down and do a picnic and take the kids, uh, you know, on an adventure. It's going to be really fun. I love it. Good for you guys. Yeah, it's our first uh, big thing since, you know, COVID. All of our vacations got canceled. I, I think I was talking with... Uh, uh, who was a Dale, I think, about uh, going to Maui. Um, so that got canceled. So so Montana's back on. And Yellowstone opened up on June 15th. So we can go to the park now and check it out, which is great. Well, it's, uh, it's 8 o'clock over here on the East Coast, uh, Mr. Jeremy. So it's about that time. I got to tell you, you want a, you want a nice life hack? Please. So there's a product and it's called, uh, it's the rabbit wine aerator with sediment uh, strainer. So I, I opened up a 20 year old Burgundy. So okay. the cork, the cork's all wet, right? Yeah, right, right. It's going to, yeah. So I've got one of those like, oh no, uh, you know, those cork, those little wine things to get the old corks and I am, I'm terrible at it. So I destroyed the damn cork. I was already destroyed. I just finished the job. And I was able to use my new rabbit aerator and strainer. Save the day. Save the day. <laughs> Yay. That's, that actually is worth every penny with a really good bottle of wine. I'm telling you. So, okay. So it saved me once. It probably cost me like 12 bucks or something, something silly. So that one bottle would save. Now for the rest of my life, now it's just free. Now it's just like this extra thing that can come save the day. It's already paid for itself. You know what I'm saying? Like the, the man, power of hard. rationalization, man. The power. Of <laughs> <laughs> it's now free. Jeremy. It's free. It's all free. Why would I throw it away? It's free. And we, at one time, we're gonna use it. My father is a is a kitchen aid junkie. He's certified. He he goes to classes for it. He's got a group. Uh, and he is just, you know, if there is a, if there's a way to make eggs better, uh, and quicker, he buys it. If there's a way to whisk eggs or, you know what I mean? Like the guy, he can't help himself. He just can't help himself. Oh, look at this. This thing gets the crumbs off your table. You need this thing to get the crumbs off the table. And this one gets the bigger crumbs. This one gets the smaller crumbs. It's like, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? I, that's how my, my mother-in-law buys me all this stuff. So that's the issue. So like, she gives me like this mushroom brush and I laughed at her. I'm like, what am I going to do with this freaking thing? Let me tell you something. I'm using <laughs> this little mushroom brush like all the time to clean the mushrooms. And yeah. I was doing, making fun of it. Yeah, it is. Those are the best gifts. The best gifts are the ones that you think are completely like impractical or, you know, a tchotchke of some sort. And it turns out to be something you use all the time. Uh, so no joke, no, no joke about that. Um, all right, well, we have a lot of exciting things to talk about. And um, I know that I'm excited to hear what you've got cooking on your end. Um, I see what you did okay. there. I see what you did there. Uh-huh, you like that? <laughs> uh, first of all, where we left off was that you were heading off to 
speak um, at a really cool event and be a part of a really cool event last week. So do you want to fill us in on what you were doing and uh, how it went? Yeah, you know, listen, I mean, I, I'm, I was very lucky for many years. I lived in New York City and I got to attend literally every single New York City chapter of the CMT so uh, meeting. So, I mean, I saw everybody and I got to meet a lot of people and then get to drink free booze that they give you there and like free snacks. And I'm like this 22 year old broke kid. So like, that's fantastic. So I get to learn technical analysis. You're going to give me food and you're going to give me booze. And I don't even have to pay for it. It's like $200 in annual dues or something like that. I'm like, what's the catch? (laughs) All right. So I got to take some tests. All right. I'll do that. Fine. You know, um, so that was a long time ago and it was great. And then since then, you know, obviously I've been invited to speak at CMT chapters all over the world, you know, Hong Kong, Singapore, Taiwan, Philippines, Kuala Lumpur, all over Europe, you know, Dublin, London, Amsterdam, Athens, Paris. And then, of course, in the United States and North America, you know, your usual suspects, you know, Chicago, San Francisco, L.A., San Diego, Dallas, Austin, Houston, uh, Chicago, Vancouver, Toronto, you know, Boston, D.C., Atlanta, like you're like your Orlando, right? So yeah. your standard areas. And I really haven't spoken uh, at a New York City chapter meeting since like 2000 and like 2012, 2013. So uh, I was invited back after all these years and uh, it was a virtual uh, chapter meeting, uh, as you can imagine, for obvious reasons. Right, it was right. Fun. It's cool. Nice, man. And then you also heard the guy, um, the top, I think he's the top CMT for Bank of America speak, right? So it was myself. So basically what they did was they invited three of us. We each did our little uh, dog and pony. And then we had a discussion afterwards. One of them is my buddy, Dan Russo, who's over at Chicken Analytics. And then uh, Paul Siena, who is the managing director of, uh, and head of technical analysis of Thick, so fixed income commodities and currencies at Bank of America. So when he talks Forex, uh, you listen, he was all about the Naki Saki. Have you ever heard of the Naki Saki? Never, ever, ever heard of the Naki Saki. There's something similar to that, but I can't repeat it here that I heard once in college. But (laughs) So the Naki Saki is, um, is the Norwegian Krona versus the Swedish crone. Um, if I, am, I, am I saying that right for you? Uh, so it's not exactly a common cross for me, but he's all he's all junked up on the Nakisaki um, and, and negative interest. Gotta be careful with the Nakisaki, man. You know what I mean? You start looking at that a couple of times, it's more powerful than you think. Um, I gotta tell you, um, it sounds like a, like, a, like a Japanese drink, like at a, it does. Like, sushi joint. like you get, you know, you get your omakase, you get your nakisaki, you know what I mean? It really, if, 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 if it doesn't exist as a drink, I think we should, we should invent one, some sake called nakisaki. It's uh, N-O-K, here we go. N-O-K-S-E-K. So you're looking at the Norwegian Krone versus the Swedish Krona. I mean, why would you look at, okay, I'm interested. You, you, that was a good open, right? They call that an open loop, close the loop. Why, why the heck do we care about that? Especially in the four. You asked me what Paul Siena was talking about, right? So I know, but what? Is, the, so, <laughs> but no, no, I meant like, what does that mean? What did he say that means? Like, why? Do, why does he care about it? How about a better question? Why does he care about it? Because he wants to buy it. Mm. You know, uh, and I can see why because Nakisaki is above the late 2015 low, so I can see how he wants to do that. Remember, this is ah. the, he's the he runs a foreign exchange, so he's dealing with. Got it, got it. $200 billion worth of Australian dollar that needs to be converted to Kiwi or whatever. Like these are the clients that he's dealing with in Bank of America. They're institutional clients that, you know, making sure that they're in the right currency really affects their bottom line. Like seriously, because these could be anything. It's not like family offices or speculators. These are just massive uh, multinational corporations with uh, different uh, currency exposure. And he helps yeah. them with that. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, and it does. I mean, some of these industries have really tight margins. And if you're not playing it right, uh, you, can be, you can be in some serious trouble. Okay, so today we had a mixed bag, right? We had some materials, communications, technology, consumer, sta- uh, consumer staples, and energy up ever so slightly. 
Uh, utilities were flat. F everything from financials down to real estate were down. These are just major U.S. equity sectors that I'm looking at. Um, and we've got green across the board in the fixed income markets. Um, you got yields up. Uh, actually, yields are also a mixed bag too. But what what do we got? So on Monday evening was our monthly conference call uh, yeah. for uh, premium members. I'm not sure if you had a chance to watch it. Uh, if you haven't, I encourage you to, because I think we make some pretty good points and come up with some good trade ideas. We even invited in Sean. Uh, Sean popped in. Uh, Ooh, brought cool. in a few trades. Yeah, you know, keep them modest. Mix, you know, keep it in the mix. And, um, you know, this bubble chart, you can see the chart, right, Jay? Yep. Yeah, so this bubble chart to me is the story. So what we did was, so the market had a little bit of a correction um, in early June. And based on our data, that correction started on June the 5th, right? So the S&P 500 and NASDAQ, all the indexes keep make, kept making new highs. But that's when our short-term breath measures peaked and started to deteriorate. So you can make a, a, a legitimate argument that uh, June 5th uh, was the peak before the correction. So what did we do? We, we ran the numbers from June 5th through last week and saw where the relative strength was because when the market is weak and under pressure, digesting gains, whatever you wanna call it, but not going up, right? The stocks and sectors and industry groups that hold up the best in that environment that's what we call relative strength, Jeremy. So think of it like a like a like a be like a big beach ball underneath, like when you hold it under a pool, like underwater. Yeah, yeah. Right? you can feel that pressure. So when that you put that pressure off, it bounce, it shoots up into the air, right? The market yeah. is the same thing. It's we're looking for those uh, stocks and sectors showing buoyancy, if you will, right? Okay. So on the y-axis, we're looking at the returns. Since June 5th, these are the, all the Dow Jones industry groups. Returns since June 5th on the y-axis. And on the x-axis, it's the drawdown from new 52-week highs. So in other words, the further to the right it is, the more it's gotten slaughtered uh, okay. over you know, this year, right? And the more, uh, the higher up it is, the better it's done, the better it did during that correction. And okay. so what are the stocks that did the best? The same old names, Jeremy, social media, software, biotechnology, cloud computing, semiconductors, internet stocks. Hello. These are, these are the names that have been the outperformers. So when the market had its correction, what were the stocks that stood out the best? Same old names, same old leaders. The leaders be leading, Jeremy. So that's where we want to focus on. So this, I think, I'm telling you, and then you can see another perspective. Here's just the whole list, you know, other than gold miners that did well in that environment, which I guess could make sense uh, for other reasons. What were the top performers? Social media, uh, software, biotech, internet, cloud computing, right? Cybersecurity. These were the names um, that, that held up the best. And if it ain't broke, don't fix it. These are the names that got us here. These are the names that were showing up on our scans in march yeah so right what, what's the story the story is it's the same old story we want to keep buying those stocks yeah those are the ones that are doing well uh those are the ones that we have been talking about uh it's also where you can't i mean it's what we're all using the most um things don't have to be that complicated you know we don't need to get that fancy sometimes it's just what's right in front of us so all right good man that's really good um and of the market, right? If you look at the difference between the NASDAQ, S&P, and uh, the Dow Jones, uh, we got the NASDAQ winning here. I'm looking at this from um, a, over a year time frame. Um, normalized performance basis. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, you know, uh, it's really the, the February highs is what we're watching. Actually, I have a chart. You want me to give you a chart? I'll give you a chart. You want me to give you yeah, a chart? Yeah, I see the February highs. Yep, and we've kind of come down and back up. Yeah, do, do I want to see a chart? That's a trick question. This is the chart. This is the chart we need to be looking at. This is it, Jeremy. This is... Let me tell you a little story. All right. I'm going to tell you a little story. All right. 
So there was this journalist in Springfield, Massachusetts in the 1880s. Okay. And he was, he needed, he needed to write about the market and he would go and knock on the door of different businesses to ask them how they're doing. And they would say, our business is none of your business. All right. <laughs> and this guy's name was Charles Henry Dow. And uh, nobody wanted to talk to him. So you know what he did? He found all of the companies or the biggest companies, I should say, that make the goods. And then he found all of the biggest companies that then deliver those goods. Back in the 1880s, there were railroads, of course, and the companies that made the goods, he called those the industrial stocks, right? There were 12 of those. And now there are 30. But back then, there were 12 OGs. And GE was one of them, by the way. Um, and they got kicked out, then brought back in, and now just got kicked <laughs> out again. So it's like this whole love-hate relationship. So anyway, down the road, he didn't call it the Charles, you know, the Dow Jones indexes. Later on, they called it that. He just yeah. called it the industrial uh, average and the railroad average. And he said, listen, if these things are going up and as a group, they're making new highs together, that, that's a good sign of the economy. That means the economy is going up. And if one of them's doing well and the other one's rolling over and not confirming the other, something's off. It's, it might be the ones making the goods. It might be the ones shipping the goods or delivering the goods, I should say. But if they're not confirming each other, one of them's off. This dude made that up 130 years ago, all right? Yeah, he wasn't no, even a trader, he was a freaking journalist, right? All right, so what happens later on in their infinite wisdom, the folks at Wall Street Journal and Dow Jones say, hey, it, it, this is stupid to call it the railroad index considering we got rail, you know, airlines and automobiles and all these things. So they're like, okay, we're gonna call it the transportation average, but it's the same thing, right? It's the same concept yeah, the companies right. that make the goods and services, the companies that then deliver them. Okay, fine. Now let's fast forward to today. Do you think that the way the goods and services are delivered today is on, on trains? Or is it electronically? Right? Electronically, is it digitally? Right. Yeah, right. Everything's digital. I, I, I think even Charlie Henry, Charles Henry Dow would say, JC, you know, I think you're right. I think that's what he would say. All right. <laughs> So there's the story about Charles Henry Dow from Springfield, Massachusetts. By the way, home of the uh, Basketball Hall of Fame, which is awesome. Like, so I not, awesome. Man, I got to go. You do. You do. Hey, um, did you, I'm, I'm, by the way, I'm so excited for July 31st and what the NBA decided to do with, like, you know, right? Better than nothing, right? It's better than nothing, but it's, it could be cool. I wish they would have taken, like, a, a, you know, a play out of the uh, NCAA and made, like, a, you know, like a finals where people were getting knocked off and their seeds and stuff. That would have been sweet. Well, that would change NBA forever, probably. It probably would, but why yeah. not? I mean, why not? That would have been anyway, but uh, it's still. We why got not? Some... Because they got to go game seven so that they can make all the money on all the All the money, all the ratings and stuff like that. I you know how it is. You know how it is. All right, so listen, Jay, so... I'm telling you the story, a 130-year-old story for a good reason, is because I think uh, Charlie Dow would agree this is the, the transportation index of today, or at least should be included in the conversation, right? Because do we know, is it this or is it that? The truth is, it's probably both, right? So I think, I think if semiconductors and the NASDAQ 100, if they're above those January, February highs, this is the ghost of Charlie Dow telling you that they're delivering the goods. You know, did you just make this up like recently? Cause that's actually really good, JC. This is one of your better, you know, stories and analogies. And better like, rants. <laughs> yes, yeah, and, and or lessons in general. Uh, no, I'm not even kidding you because uh, there was, I, I will never forget, somebody did a, a very similar kind of a cool story. Um, uh, maybe this is like eight years ago, six years ago. And they were talking about uh, the new railroad across America, right? And um, back when the railroads were here, it, it created, it admitted all these communities and cities we know of today and industries we know of today because of the railroad system. And this was going to be the railroad across the Pacific. So it's the new railroad across the Pacific. And they're trying to draw this analogy about how uh, the railroad system just transformed America, the face of it as we know it. They did this in a certain way where they were talking about fiber optic cables. Yeah. And by running fiber optic cables across the Pacific and the Atlantic, um, how that was supposed to transform all these different businesses. 
that was a pretty darn good comparison. I mean, they built a really good story around what happened. And sure enough, that's exactly what did happen. And I think you're onto something here. From a transportation basis, right, if you're looking at that sector and looking at businesses and the health of the overall economy, and now and what is else being shared? Information is the, is the 2020 currency. I mean, that's what's yeah. like what, it's the thing that we're making the most of, right? We make information all the time. And so we have a new way of communicating that information and, and look at all these sectors and all these things that we want. Netflix is what? It's, it's creativity slash information being disseminated. Um, so anyway, I could go on and on, but I really like what you did there. You well like done. that, Jeremy? I, do. I really do. That was good. Listen, as long as you like it, that's, that's what matters. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, I, got well, a, I, got a, I got a surprise. Am I allowed to talk about the surprise? Am I, uh, you, to? I already blogged about it, so. <laughs> yes, you can. Yeah, I saw that. Cat's out of the bag. Yes, sir. Do All it. All right. So I'm going to talk about it. All right, folks. So we incorporate a top-down approach through and through. Firm, you know, we start, you're going to ask me about a stock. I'm going to start telling you about what bonds are doing and commodities are doing. And ultimately, I'm going to get to what you're, to answer your, you know, whatever, right? We start yeah. by looking at all of the indexes around the world. If, you, if this country has a stock market, that index is on our list. And in some cases, there's multiple indexes on our list from that country. So we look at every asset class, interest rates, commodities, Forex markets, maybe not the Nakisaki like Paul Siena is looking <laughs> on a daily basis, but we're looking at all the major crosses, right? Yeah. Great. Then and only then do we come to the United States and look at the NASDAQ 100 and the S&P 500 and the Dow and the transports and the Russell small caps and the value line. And we go down the whole list, New York Stock Exchange composite, all of them. Then we'll look at the sectors and the industry groups, energy, financials, technology, healthcare, right? And then the sub-industry groups, regional banks, broker-dealers, insurance within financials, right? In energy, you got oil services, explorers, producers, the refiners, different stocks, different industries within that sector. And then ultimately, we're going to look at the individual stocks and look for stocks with the best risk versus reward setup to take advantage of that particular thesis in that sector or industry group. So in, in, if in our infinite wisdom, we decide we want to buy Microsoft, 95% of the reason why we're buying Microsoft has nothing to do with the chart of Microsoft, right? It has to do with the fact that we probably like large caps. We probably like U.S. stocks. We probably like tech, right? And then Microsoft just happens to be a favorable risk reward to express that thesis. So that's our thought process. And in order to throw a wrench in that top-down approach, in the past, we've looked at things like the IBD50, uh, which is stocks showing momentum and relative strength, but also like earnings growth and stuff like that. I couldn't give a rat's ass how much money a company is making or losing. That's not my problem. So the IBD 50, while it is nice, you know, I think it limits because it's looking for companies with earnings growth. I don't care how much money a company is losing. You know, I want to buy a stock that I could sell higher, right? What a company's making doesn't really matter to me. So I don't love that about it. Um, so it's good, but not great. So what do we do? We are now, um, my uh, coder guys are doing things with APIs and scraping data and all sorts of fancy stuff that's way above my pay grade. But needless to say, what I end up getting at the end is a heads up when a bunch of lunatics are flying into a specific stock. And that's really all I need to know. Now, <laughs> how, I, how Thomas gets that to me in Straza, how they get me that data, the less I know, the better. Yeah. Um, but they're getting it to me. And uh, this, is, this is just a, a quick list. Uh, we're looking at week over week changes. Um, we're working, we're messing around with the data, trying to get different stuff. But basically, we're getting a heads up that a bunch of lunatics on their iPhones are buying a specific stock. In a lot of cases, they're doing very well. You know, if you go down this list, these are names that we've been buying. Tesla, Amazon, Apple, uh, uh GE, definitely not GE. Uh, let's see, Microsoft, uh, Plug Power, Coca-Cola. Uh, so a bunch of names that are already on our list, but it really is interesting. So this is this this serves two purposes. Number one, um, it, it's a great wrench to throw in our process because it forces us to use a bottoms-up approach. 
and analyze things differently, which I, we love that. Yep. Um, it's just a different universe of stocks. Um, and not only can we bet with the crowd, right? Because <laughs> listen, if you see a bubble, you better buy into it because there's a lot of money made in bubbles. Um, but we can also bet against them. So we're looking for longs and shorts. Um, it's just a great universe that we didn't have before. It might, you know, Charlie Dow didn't have Robin Hood data 130 no. years yeah, ago. Yeah, not at all. But if he did, he'd definitely be doing something with it. And that's really cool that you're doing something with it as well. And yeah, there's some really interesting um, pieces of information that we can do. And I think another thing that's a kind of a cool analogy I thought of when you're explaining that story is if you talk to a farmer uh, uh, about what he's going to farm. You say, hey, I've got this plot of land. I'd like to farm something. What should I farm? Um, he's going to ask you a bunch of questions about where this farm is located, what type of region it is, what type of soil does it have. He's going to go into all of these different factors before he asks you any preferences about what do you like to eat? What do you, you know what I mean? Like, what are you into? like somebody who lived in the Midwest before. Ah, yes, that's for sure I did. And I lived on a farm, actually, nevertheless. And so, uh, but this is, it's a very good, I think a really good analogy for trading and investing, right? So much of a lot of investors and traders will specifically go and ask and look at the headline stuff and say, oh, look at, look at this company. They're, they must be doing this. And then they want to go and invest. What I love so much about what you do with this top-down approach is the farmer's approach. It is asking ourselves, hold on a second, where's the farm located? Uh, what is the temperature like year round? How much rain does it get? How much sunshine does it get? What's the soil like? What was planted there before? Because if something else was planted there before, it took all the nutrients out. If you want, if the goal is for something to grow and you want to make a lot of it, well, you're going to ask those types of questions. That's that top down approach. Now, so that doesn't matter if it's Microsoft. You chose Microsoft or soybeans. You chose Amazon or corn. You chose these specific things based off of what the farm and the land and everything else told you about, and then it was the, the last terroir. pick. Terroir. Yeah. That's, that's what the French call it. It's a fancy word, terroir. Terroir. Ah, I like it. That's a, that's a great word uh, to describe all that stuff. And so that's, that's an interesting perspective. I like it as well. And so, again, doing this top-down approach and getting more of this data – um, a farm, the more data the farmer has about your farm, the better information that he can give you on what crops are most likely going to grow and thrive. So it's something else that you can consider as well, which is really cool. Um, or grape wines. Yes, JB is saying, or grape wine for farmers. I like that guy. All right. So let me show you, let me, let's show off the, uh, you know, the old indicator, right? So we're taking this from Robin Tracks. And in green, you're seeing the increase in uh, accounts in Robinhood buying Tesla. And in pink, you see the price. So you could see when Tesla got slaughtered, Robinhood buyers were all over it. And yeah. they were right. So when yeah. you talk about how they're the dumb money or the, you know, the small investor and the institutions are smarter, let me tell you something. I'm talking with these institutions on a daily basis. <laughs> And there's some really big guys struggling hard. And as you can see with this data, as Tesla was declining, they were buying more of it. They nailed it. So um, I like this. If we're above 917, I like Tesla long. Um, it could be like this. It could be a failed move. Um, I think it's like this. Uh, so uh, I like Tesla long if we're above uh, 917. And I think we go to 267. So we are uh, taking the Robinhood data and we're using it as an as a idea generator. And, um, you know, we come up with this every week. We're going to put out a note to our clients, uh, just a nice little value add for premium members of All Star Charts uh, that started this week. So we're pretty stoked about it. That's amazing. And this is such a genius thing because this is such a huge popular trading app. Um, they're making headlines uh, good and that's bad. What Howard said. He's like, oh, that's genius. Yeah, it is a genius idea. It's so he's, a, he's an angel investor in Robinhood. So anything that I'm doing that pumps up Robinhood, he's like, yeah, JC. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, it's genius. There's a lot of, well, it's, it's genius for a lot of different reasons. There's a lot of people who, are, um, uh, who use that platform. It's a great entry-level platform. So uh, yeah, I like it. Um, 
Okay. So you also put out a trade signal last week about, I'd like to see this. This is uh, turning out to be pretty well. Somebody has already commented and said, where to go. So these are your clients telling you where to go on Peloton, P-T-O-N. Yeah. I mean, listen, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a clean chart. Um, I love, I love a good clean chart. I feel like they they're, there's not, because of, you know, the heart attack that the market had this year, clean charts are uh, hard to come by, but uh, I'll show you exactly what's going on. So this is the, um, this is the Peloton. Uh, we like it long if we're above 49, uh, it's up now towards 51. Um, uh, I can't see your chart, buddy. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry about mm -hmm. that. There we go. We're sitting here buying software stocks and we can't use the damn software. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is Peloton. I like the stock. Um, seems quite obvious why, you know, we had former resistance in the fourth quarter that turned into a multi-month base. Let's call it like what, like almost like a six month base that broke out last month, uh, quickly hit its upside objective of 49 consolidated sideways. And now it's resolving higher in a perfect stair step. So uh, the stock from a risk reward standpoint makes perfect sense. I mean, you're looking at uh, when we first got into this trade, we were looking at an 18 to one reward to risk. I'll is, take that. I mean, Jesus, uh, eight, uh, 18 to one in an uptrend with bullish momentum and positive relative strength. What, what you know, you could know, it not work? I sure. Would, sure. But shit, if you wouldn't do that trade a thousand times, you're good, you know. Yeah, man. You're kicking butt and taking names. You, you yeah, this is a this is a, a lovely stock. Uh the story makes sense. Technically, it also makes sense uh with what's happening right now. Uh people are slow, man. They're slow. I, I have my have a Peloton. My wife loves it. She's on it all the time. Uh and the truth is, is like our gym opened up on Friday. Our the gym I love to go to. Uh, and I was so, I mean, I, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, JC, I was like, oh my gosh, I need this gym to open back up. I want to go back up and now it's open back up and I haven't gone. And I'm like, eh, you know what I mean? I, uh, it's just one of those things where, and we, we, we invested a little bit of money into our home gym. And, and so, you know, I think there's a lot of people that are kind of in that boat and they, a lot of people kind of pulled the trigger and they like it. And so they're telling their friends about it. So, uh, that's, that's a one where it just rationally makes sense with the environment that we're in. Uh, we, we don't make our investment decisions that way at all. Uh, it's the technical analysis story that really seals the deal. So an 18 to one risk reward ratio. Um, I have that up here on my chart or on my, uh, my screen as well. So and then, hold on and let me tell you, uh, what Sean, Sean likes, uh, Sean likes the October 60 strikes. Okay. October 60 strike calls for just under six bucks. He likes it because the most we could lose is the debit we pay for those calls. So the most we could lose is those six bucks. He says that he considered buying the 5575 bull call spread for about the same price, but then he thought it would be better to leave the upside open-ended because you never know in this market. So rather than being a little bit more conservative with the upside and buying the bull call spread, uh, he just said, let's just go in naked, buy the calls, and now we have unlimited upside potential. Well, uh, going so back to your beach ball analogy, that's what this wide six month base looks like, right? So when this ball is being held underneath the water, what does it want to do when it releases? It wants to jump and shoot. So by having a outright, a uh, long call option, uh, you get the maximum upside potential. There's unlimited amount of money toward the upside. Um, going out of the money means that you're paying less, which means that your risk is lower, but your upside potential is higher and max that with an 18 to one risk reward ratio. I think that's a great call doing just a, no pun intended, doing a right outright call. I think if we had a, a little bit of a, a worse uh, risk reward ratio, uh, maybe not such of a big base, uh, doing something like a bull call spread and taking off the short call. I think, if, I think if it wasn't such a good risk reward, like let's say it was a worse risk reward ratio, I'd be more inclined to put the options trade on. I think the fact that the equities is set up with such a favorable, clean risk reward, I think the equities are fine, right? I mean, listen, it all depends. If you don't want to lay out the cash on the equities, 
and you rather have like a synthetic long with a call option, you know, by all means, there's nothing wrong with that. But because the risk is so well defined, you know, I like equities in that sort of situation, Jay. I do too. Um, all right. Nice, man. Um, thank you for that. What else do you got? I'm well, so demanding, I, aren't I? <laughs> well, I'll tell you what I got. Listen, you know, I, look, we could we could do this all night. You really want you want to go there? We could do this all night. Uh, <laughs> you know, we can. <laughs> yes, I do. Um, we can go into tomorrow night. Um, let me uh, let's take a field trip back in time and go back to March 10th when we released the coronavirus index. Remember the coronavirus index? How could I forget? It was like yesterday. I, I, I feel like, I, yeah, have, have you heard that song, the uh, Cardi B? Coronavirus, corona shit is getting real. <laughs> oh my God, dude, Cardi B is like my spirit animal, man. I swear, dude. I can't. I can't with Cardi B. Anyway, so <laughs> I, I, every time I say coronavirus, I can hear her like screaming in the song. Yeah. Um, That's what you got to love about America, by the way. You got to love about America, dude. She's a multimillionaire because she can go, oh, come on. Oh, I can't even do it. My Jen can do it so well. She did okay. You know, she like rolls the oh car. Oh, I don't know. I'm I'm butchering it. All right. Help me. Save me. I'm drowning over here, JC. Oh, you're on your own, bro. <laughs> so so we, we came up with this coronavirus index, which is basically uh, I mean, look at the names. These were the list of stocks with the highest uh momentum readings, uh, the highest relative strength readings. Um, and this was an equally weighted index that we put together. This was on March the 10th. Little did we know that the market would bottom two days later. We obviously didn't know that, but we did know that when it did bottom, these were the stocks that we wanted to own, right? Um, so we started buying them already because we figured we were close. Uh, and then literally the market bottomed two days later, the S and P and the Dow and them bottomed, I think like the 19th or the 23rd or something like that. Um, but the list of new lows peaked on March the 12th. So that was the low. Uh, and then look at the names. I mean, you're going to laugh like Clorox, yeah. uh, you know, Activision, T-Doc has been a home run, Baba, DocuSign, Amazon, Netflix, uh, Okta's, uh, Zoom, which we're using right now has been a monster, Regeneron. I mean, this was on March the 10th. GLD. Um, yep. So this isn't like to take a victory lap or anything like that. Like there's no end zone dances, uh, you know, in, in our office. That's not what this is. The reason I bring this up is kind of the same reason that I brought up that bubble chart uh, before. Like, it's the same old names. These things have been working uh, for months since March. They still look good. So, like, when you look at Dollar General, this looks like a breakout is coming. We want to be buyers on a breakout above 190. Look at Teladoc. If we take out 189, we want to be buyers. I think we got another 100 points of upside. Clorox breaking out. If we're above 210, we want to be long. I think we go to 244, Activision, the, the, the video game stocks, they're all breaking out. Um, the coronavirus index, shit is getting real. <laughs> it's getting real. <laughs> Just keep on stacking them, man. Keep on we stacking them. show the music video so these people don't think that we're crazy. They're like, what are these fools talking about? <laughs> all right. Me, so look it up. Look it up. It's a real thing. Um, all right, guys. Unfortunately, we it is a <laughs> don't be hating on cardi b bro uh all right so um all right we loved it we loved to open it up to people last time we didn't have a chance some of the, some of these um sessions we, we don't get a chance to get some feedback from you guys so i know that um we had john he raised his hand uh i don't know if you got a mic john but we we can turn you live if you want to ask your question so i'm gonna i'm gonna say allowed to talk all right so you're good to go john do you want to ask your question Hmm. Maybe he's just saying hi. All right. Well, what do we got for, uh, here we go. You're going to pull my favorite gold. I like it. I, you know, I was going to ask you because I got, it's some, coming. You yeah, know I it's know coming. it's coming, dude. All right. So we're right in the middle to answer your question. I knew it was coming. So where are we? We're right in the middle. Here's support. Here's resistance. Where are we? Right smack dab in the middle. Um, and then looking at a short term, here's your consolidation. 
There we it go. should resolve in the direction of the underlying trend. I mean, that would be the higher probability outcome. My crystal ball's in the shop, so I can't tell you that that's what's going to happen. But uh, that is the higher probability outcome. But if you start seeing the sucker below 1675, it's a big problemo. So we're watching this consolidation. That's how I look at it. And then 31 on GDX. If we fail below 31, that could be a problem. I think this will most likely hold, and we're off to the races. But... The market doesn't care what I think. So 31 is that level. Yeah, I would have to concur with that as well. Thank you for that. I did want to know, you know, I'm seeing this thing and uh, I was hoping for a little bit faster of a, of a you know, move toward this upside. However, I think that the longer this thing starts to consolidate, the bigger the upside will be when it actually happens. Uh, so I too am still holding out and still bullish personally. So uh, thank you for that. What other ticker symbols do you guys want to see? This is everyone's usually favorite time. This is where we get to blitz JC with questions. Uh, and uh, you can either you can either raise your hand, which uh, we'll go ahead and, and uh, call on you, or um, you can ask the ticker, put the ticker symbol here in the chat feature, and we'll go to you. We've got about 20 minutes left. So Dale just covered, he said that he wanted the GDX, so that was his question, no problem. Dale and I are, are uh, on the same page there. Thanks so much for making it again, by the way, Dale. Appreciate it. Can I just show you a dope chart, like super dope chart? Yeah. Look at this bad boy. So this is the Amazon <laughs> of Latin America. So there's an Argentinian company named uh, Mercado Libre. Mercado, what does, it say? what does that mean? Mercado Libre, that means free market. Got but it. it's an Argentinian stock, so, you know, irony. Paradox. Um, anyway, um, <laughs> Meli, M-E-L-I, Mercado Libre. By the way, I got no beef with Argentina. Uh, some of my favorite wine in the world. I love churrasco. Um, you know, don't shoot uh, the messenger, but y'all's got some issues down yeah, there. It's, it's, uh, it's, not, it's not pretty. It's, it's spectacularly awesome and spectacularly disastrous all at the same time. And uh, I've actually never been. I'm dying to go. Um, maybe the most beautiful women in the world, Argentinian women. They have, they're like kind of like Italian, um, yeah. Italian ish, right? Yeah. yeah, I'd say so. It kind of, yeah. So this is my stock, uh, 830. That's the level. If we're above 830, I think we can own this all day long. And uh, I think we have 500 points of upside. Damn. My calculations are correct. That's 60 ish percent. It's not nothing. Ah, I like it, dude. What's your call? Where do you think this is going to go? 1337. Ooh, ooh. All right, there you go. I like it. You're, I like it. M-E-L-I. Mercado All right, we, Libre. All right, we got, uh, we got C-R-W-D. I'll pull this up. C-R-W-D. Oh, All yeah, right. Crowdstrike. Crossstrike, yeah, we just um, we just put this out uh, as an idea. Actually, um, I will. Where do I have this? Yeah, we just pull. We just. Uh, I mean, look. I mean, here I pull up a daily chart. Yeah, this is this is one of our favorite longs, as a matter of fact. So. I'm not sure who uh, who came up with uh, this thought, but uh, nice eye. Um, maybe you've actually been reading our research. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> He's definitely a good client. Uh, he's here a, a lot. Thank you so much for uh, asking the question, JB. Yeah, I mean, listen, this is how I see it. JB always shared some pretty interesting stuff. Uh, with us in the panel. Maybe he came by to say what's up when we were in uh, in Newport. He brought me some wine. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you just missed him. Oh, did I? Yeah, he swung remember. by because he lives down there. I was like, hey, we're running around. Oh, he came to the studio? Yeah. Oh, he did. Oh, my gosh. Ah. Yeah, um, JB, JB's a homie. Nice. Yeah, he was there behind the scenes. Ah, I like it. Just hanging out, watching that. Yeah. And these people haven't even seen that yet. That's going to be so good when we get that ready. Yeah, I'm pretty stoked. So um, 
This is CrowdStrike. Um, you know, it's pretty obvious. We've got a little consolidation below overhead supply from last year. Um, if we break out above that 102, 103 level, we got another 40 something points of upside. Um, so I don't know when it's going to break out. It might break out tomorrow. Um, it could break out uh, a month from now. I don't know. Um, the longer it takes, probably the better. Eh, I shouldn't say that. Um, not the, we'll see how long it takes, but above 103, that's where we feel comfortable owning it. Uh, until then, we'll be patient, as patient as we have to be. Uh, but when it gets going, we're going to be <laughs> we're going to be involved. Uh, but yeah, uh, JB, good call on that. Um, you obviously saw it already, so you knew what I was going to say. Thanks for the alley -oop. Yeah, nice. What do they do? What does what does CrowdStrike do? Out of curiosity. I uh, haven't the foggiest idea. I'm pretty sure it's a cloud uh, cloud stock. Okay, information technology is the sector. Yeah, right. precisely. Yeah, big data. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, isn't that isn't that a coincidence, right? Isn't that a coincidence? We're just talking about you know your top down approach and how these different sectors are. You know what I mean? Like yeah. there's yet the, another the, one. The funny part is, is that it's not coincidence. That's why we like this damn stock because it's not a freaking energy stock. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Talk about a stock we probably don't like, but uh, somebody wanted to talk about airlines. Uh, I'd like to know that too. Uh, it's like an interesting question. So Joseph, thanks so much for asking the question. UAL is the exact ticker symbol. United Continental Holdings. Yeah, I mean, listen, what do you want me to say? I like the ones that are on the upper left of that uh, chart that I showed you on the bubble chart. And this just ain't that. Like, look. Like, is this the crap that you want to buy? Like, I'm showing you charts breaking out to all-time highs. And, like, you want to buy this disaster? You know, UAL looks exactly like the trend. You know, this is uh, airlines and this is UAL. So, basically, they look exactly the same. You know, listen, if you want to be, if you want to get caught up in this mess and this chop fest and this underperformance land, you know, be my guest. You know, for me, man, I could show you a thousand charts that look better than this is, is, is kind of like how I look at it. You know, well, let's I mean? break, let's break this down. This is a good, this is a good thing about your asymmetric risk reward ratio trade stuff that we're talking about. So look, we're not bashing it and, and there's, the Fed comes in, they're going to bail them out, you know, and there's like, it's going to come back. The coronavirus is lifting. This is a lot of headline fundamental and instinct. It's like, well, this has got to go up, right? There's got, this has got to be something that's there. Here's the difference, right? Is that the markets can remain illogical far longer than you or I can remain solvent. And so what, what we're saying here is that, sure, this thing could go right back up, finish the trend, and then it's back on JC's radar because it's break, you know, that whole sector is breaking out and he's all excited about it. Did he miss the bottom, the low, low, and all the junk that's down there? He misses that stuff all the time. There's stocks and, and sectors that happen all the time. But more often than not, way, way more often than not, these chop fests, what he calls them, these markets that are underperforming, that are go up and down, volatile, and usually you're just staying who needs, low. Who needs the headache? Yeah, and because here's the thing, folks. If you haven't been trading long enough, okay, this is, I worked at a hedge fund for seven years. I had a financial advisory firm for three years. For 10 years, I've been helping people with this stuff. And here's the thing that people realize, don't realize, JC, is that they see an opportunity like that, so they go buy it. They go throw $10,000 in there. And you know what happens in five years? Nothing, nothing happens in five years, nothing at all. They went on a roller coaster ride and one day they look at it, one month they're super stoked that they owned it, the other month they're like not sure if they wanted to own it, the other month they wish they never would have owned it, five years. Meanwhile, JC and your, your, your group and your members are finding things that are like, oh, this looks great, this looks great, this looks great, this looks great. We're capitalist folks. We want our money working absolutely as and, hard and as gets, possible for Jeremy, it. Jeremy, and it gets worse than that because not only what you said is 100% right, you're getting it chopped up, you're, not, you're, you're missing out on all these other opportunities. The big thing is that because you're in this messy trade that's just causing aggravation, your attention is being focused on something that's not paying you. And that attention, you're gonna miss the giant elephant walking right past you, the DocuSign or the Zoom, because you've been busy bottom fishing these freaking Carnival Cruise Lines or Boeing or whatever, <laughs> you know, got crushed. Like you're missing breakouts to new all time highs because 
your focus on Spanish debt levels and you're, you know, what the hell does that have to do with Regeneron? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, so I think it's important to put things in perspective um, and not be disillusioned uh, by, you know, or, or distracted by focusing on stuff that's not working. Like, yeah, if you live in Texas and you've been investing in energy, of course you think the stock market sucks. But if you're in Silicon Valley and you've been buying all these software stocks, you're like, whoa, these are great. <laughs> yeah, uh, Jeff, you said it really well. He says opportunity cost. Yeah, 100%. That's really at the end of the day, it's opportunity cost. And there is a cost. And what we mean by that, there's a mental fatigue, there's an emotional fatigue. Um, you, you know what I mean? Like you just get all uninterested. Yeah, all of that. Uh, and you start making bad decisions. So it's like, why not? Why try? Why, why make your money work so freaking hard? Why make your, your emotional mental state work so hard when there's, like you said, the elephant walking by that you can just hop on and, um, and off you go. So um, sorry, I just want to take a moment to talk about that, uh, Joseph. So I love that you asked that question it gives us a really good opportunity to discuss that. We don't want to just say, they can, Oh, it's, they can go up. But my question is, where are you wrong on that? Like, it's such a mess. Like, how do we identify a level where we be like, oh, we're wrong if it breaks below that. Like, it's such a mess that it's just hard to quantify uh, and select where the risk is. What's the reward? It just looks like a mess. That's yeah. how I look at it. Yeah, exactly. Um, I agree. And it's like that indecisiveness isn't just the place we want to be. That, that unknown, we don't want to be there. We want to be in the places where we kind of know, you know what I mean? Where we feel like this is probably the most likely thing that's going to happen. We like, we like feeling that way. Um, okay, great. Um, we got uh, Jeff is asking about, uh, are you talking about the, uh, the corporate bond yields? You are? Is that what he's saying? Oh, no, he's no, talking, talking about, about Coreside Realty. Yeah, Realty, okay. Yeah, it's a great chart. Um, you know, definitely been on our radar for a while looking for that breakout. Still haven't gotten it. Um, but I do, you know, my bet is it's coming here. Let me show you guys what I'm looking at. Yeah, I mean, listen, these are, is this, um, is this one of the, uh, uh, Is this the, no, it's office space. Um, because what's interesting is that these REITs, um, the, the data centers stuff, the towers and data center REITs, like those, these things have been ridiculous. Cause basically it's a software play, you know, technology play in real estate, if you will. Those have been home runs. This isn't that, um, but uh, I, I mean, what's there not to like here? Look at that consolidation. You see that Jeremy? Yeah, I like it. What is that? We're going on three it's an upward, years. Yeah, three years consolidation. It's a big fat base with an upward trend before, which means the likelihood of an upward trend is there. Continuation. You know what I'm saying? So, like, this is this is how I see that, you know? Right? That's how I see that. And then ultimately, you know, we break out. Right? And that we no. break out from this base. You know? what? What's it going to take? You know, realistically, 125, we get above 125, that should do it. That'll get us up there. Yeah, so this is one of those data, this is basically a tech play. Um, it, this one is not a tech play. This um, one is a, I like, the like they're in this cloud computing though, no, isn't this what this is? Like Corsite provides access to Oracle cloud. Oh yeah, you're absolutely right. This is one of those. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. No wonder this it looks so good. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say this is one. I, I'm. Oh, I didn't. I've never even heard of this. This yeah, company. Yeah, yeah, anymore. you're right. So I'm, I'm looking at the. I'm looking. I'm. I'm doing future research. I'm, I'm not future. I'm doing deeper research as we speak on the fly here about what this company does. So data you, centers and cell towers. That's what this is. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And that's what you are saying that you like. And anyway, I was like, oh, and this is exactly what that is. Good. Fine. I like that. Yeah. Uh, thank you for that. That was a good one. Um, that's a good, that's a fun one to look at. I'm actually going to tag that and put that one on my radar. Um, we've got Fran. Hey, Fran, nice to see you. Thanks for so much for coming. Um, he is looking at, uh, he or she, uh, is looking at ABBV. Um, thanks so much for, for asking ABBV. Let's take a look. BV. Um, okay. Healthcare. 
Yeah, drug manufacturers. So I've got a friend of mine. Uh, I, I'm really big into mountain biking. And I have a friend of mine. He's 56 years old. He's a goat. A guy can climb up anything. He makes, I'm, I'm 37 and he makes me feel like I'm 59. You know, he's just absolutely kills me on these uphills. He owns an $80 million uh, healthcare portfolio, um, like hospice, uh, retirement home, you know, group. Anyway, uh, and he's been really, really blessed over his last 30 years of his life being in this specific, uh, I know this is a, a little bit of a different genre, but he's, he likes it. And you know, healthcare is one of those things, man. It's like, no matter what, we need to get our hair cut. You know, we need to, we need to be conscious of our health. Uh, we're going to need insurance, got to pay taxes. So, uh, what do you think? You pulling this thing up? So for me, I I'd like to, you know, it's hard for me not to point out this polarity, you know, this former resistance in 2014, 2015, that we got the breakout in 2017 and then yep. this turned into support, right? All that resistance turned into support. So like clean as could be, um, notice how this consolidation resolved down, uh, last year. Uh, so that where that resolve, that's been trouble. So I think that if we can start breaking out above, let's call it 95. If we're holding above 95, I think we could be long with a target up near 125. Yeah, I really do. Yeah, I like this as well. This is another good find. Um, we, we're all about educating and teaching. So the point of us asking you guys, giving us these, these, uh, different ticker symbols here is that hopefully you are hearing how JC breaks down a chart right in front of your eyes. And we also like the idea of having there be stocks and ticker symbols that, uh, mm -hmm. JC is unprepared for, right? Maybe never even heard of the particular company. And, uh, the reason why I like that is because he's going to, that, that gives him like the, the most honest way of analyzing something. And uh, we should create the JC index, right? We should like, you know, start charting out all the different things that you are saying and, and seeing how, how those go. But uh, more often than not, you're right. And when you're really right, you're, you kill it. And a lot of people ask you, how do you do it, JC? How can I get better at it? Um, if my team can drop the link, what you decided to do, which is also some really fun news, is that you decided to give away a, uh, you're the first, if you haven't taken the course, it's amazing, but we decided to give away the first um, a bit of this course. And so Hannah uh, or Lauren, if you guys are here, can you guys drop this link? This is a great way, there it is, thank you. This is a great way for you to get access to um, something that JC had put months and months and months behind. He's got an Emmy award winning uh, uh, film, film, uh, videographer that, that actually put this stuff together for him. He's actually full time, uh, on JC's staff. Uh, he's an amazing guy. And so you guys can access this link right now. We're giving away the first, the first section for free. So if you haven't uh, looked at it, if you're brand new to who JC is and you want to know what this guy can do, just, ch just take a look at it. Um, and JC, you can tell everybody, I, I know last time we kind of went into a little bit, but what you did to put this thing together is pretty phenomenal. Yeah, listen, I'm lucky. I've, I've had some experience kind of putting together a course before because a couple of companies in the past paid me to do that. So I kind of already had a lot of the work done. Um, and, you know, in all my contracts, I always had the liberty to do whatever I wanted. And we have a great, like you said, Giancarlo and the team, multi-time Emmy Award winners. They just won another Emmy uh, two Saturdays ago, which is ridiculous. So I'm super happy so for them. Super man. stoked. Giancarlo just dropped a jazz album. Like, listen, the guys on our team are, you know, they are, uh, they're, they're serious in what they they're do. They're talented. So talented. Yeah, they're um, talented. Giancarlo is definitely up there. And he tells me, he's like, he's like, JC, I'm going to sign the contract. But like, it needs to be in there that I can have my artistic freedom and I can keep producing my jazz albums. I'm like, dude, produce as many <laughs> jazz albums as you want. <laughs> Absolutely. We should get him to, we should have him make some custom music overlays for some of the transition. He does. We use his oh, he's all, is this his music? No yeah, way. I did man. not know that. Yeah, oh, that's yeah, even yeah. better. It's extra benefits. We don't have to pay for the music. He just makes Oh, it. that is even, that actually makes me really happy, dude. That makes yeah, me happy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we should, because the guy's really talented. Well, nevertheless, it's all about making money. And to make money, you got to have some things in between your ears. Um, and you got to have that knowledge. And there's, there's, 
two things. There's two things that you need. You need knowledge and experience, right? Um, we can't give you the experience. We wish we could just bottle up all the experience that JC has and just give that to you. Uh, but we can give you the knowledge and you can leverage JC's experience by becoming a, a premium member. Um, there's a lot of people who are here today who are your premium members. Uh, and these guys can tell you firsthand how great JC is and you guys often do. So for those of you who are, we thank you so much for all the support for JC. I know that he loves it. Um, so we have a few minutes. We can do one more. Your your choice, JC. You can look at it here. They got a couple of um, people put some some in there. Do you want to take a take a stab at one more chart? How about how about more of a concept, more of an idea, okay. right? Because technical analysis, like everybody thinks it's about charts and the charts and the charts and the charts. And yes, technical analysis charts are part of that, right? Because we're analyzing data, but Forget the charts for a second and maybe, because remember by being technicians, we're analyzing the behavior of the market and therefore market participants. So if we're gonna be doing that, we should analyze our own behavior. And it's easy for us to say here and be like, yeah, Jeremy, the stocks that are doing well, they keep doing well, we need to keep buying them. But let's go back a couple of months and we were looking for some short opportunities. And guess what? Those short opportunities got steamrolled immediately, all right? So that in and of itself is information, right? We are observing what we are doing and our long positions are working spectacularly well and our short positions are sucking it up. That's information. And that's information we had months ago that we then took and said, man, our shorts are really stinking up the joint and our lungs look great. Like, hello, we should keep doing the stuff that's working and stop doing the stuff that ain't working. And now we're like, wow, these lungs have really worked. And guess what? We stopped trying to short stocks this whole time. So it's less about the charts and maybe more observing, maybe not more, but in addition to the charts, observing what's happening around you. Are yeah. you listening to the message of the market or are you just being stubborn because your Spanish debt, you know, levels are not to your liking. So you're shorting stocks because of it or whatever, you know, like what, what's, what's, what's your, what's your PL looking like when you're making these decisions, money is going where it's treated best. And that's how institutions think. And I think that we all investors should think like that as well. My friend Greg Roulette said uh, this to me and I, and I never forgot it. He goes, Jeremy, make sure in life and in business and in investing that your mission is above your ego. So I never forgot that. Is your mission above your ego? As investors and traders, our mission is to make money. Don't let your ego of what you think it must happen or you like this or you like that or you don't like being wrong. You're embarrassed to be wrong that you bought this company that you thought was going to go up and it didn't go up. Don't let that harm, your, the ego harm your profits because that's what we're here for, everybody. You're here and spending this hour with us every single week. JC and I are here talking about it. We're passionate about it. We try to make it interesting. We try to make it fun, but do not let the jokes... Uh, by us by one second I uh, think that we're not dead serious about our mission of making money that's the only freaking point of this whole thing so Jeremy, think about it think about this you know you go bottom of the ninth your team's down a couple of runs you come out with two outs man on second and third you drop a bomb walk off home run you get interviewed by the journalist afterwards how does it feel all that stuff what are they asking about they're asking about the home run. They're asking about how it feels to win the game. They're not asking about how you struck out in the yeah. third inning, right? Yeah. Swinging at really bad pitches. Everyone forgot about that. Yep. Everyone forgot because you hit the game winning home run. That's and that's right. all that matters, right? No, they're not asking about the strikeout that you embarrassed that's the hell out of yourself because you look like crap swinging <laughs> at bad pitches, swinging at curveballs in the dirt. You know what I'm saying? Like, Nobody's going to bring that up. That so is a great point. You have to embrace the losses. It's part of it. Um, but you're going to, you know, as long as you're consistent, you're going to win at the end of the day. And I know there's not like a pretty journalist asking you about your game winning home run at the end of every trading day. Uh, but let's say there was, are they going to ask you about that trade where you crushed it? Or are they going to ask you where you took that little small loss? No big deal. They're going to ask you about the good trade. 
That is an, that's great, man. You brought it today, dude. You got some good stuff. I don't know. That was really good. I liked it. I took some notes. Thank you guys for who participated. I actually got a couple more stocks. I'm going to do a deeper dive on JC as always. You're amazing. My friend, thank you so much for your time. Have a wonderful evening. Give your wife uh, a big hi and hello for me. And um, I'll see, I'll see you guys next week. Thank you so much. Bye everyone.